We'll be holding a hearing next week on Washington, D.C.'s proposed new law decriminalizing marijuana. Under the new law, those found with small amounts of pot would be subject to a $25 fine, not jail time. Smoking pot, meanwhile, in public remains illegal. That bill passed the D.C. Council with a 10 to 1 vote back in March. The mayor signed it into law. So why does Congress have the final say on a local ordinance? I want to bring in Washington, D.C. Democrat Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton. Uh, you are scheduled uh, to be testifying on the House Committee on this. May 8th, right? I am. Because, because there should be no hearing why do you, this. Why do you think that the committee has to even take a look at this thing. You know, this committee, and I'm on the full committee, not the subcommittee, has looked at the conflict between local and federal laws on ma marijuana. Uh, and you will note that 18 states have decriminalized yeah. marijuana. We are now simply joining them. Uh, but in none of those hearings was any local official called. Now, he's tried to call local officials, and he's going to get at least some, uh, or perhaps a uh, police official. When you say he. Uh, and that is John Micah, the chair of the subcommittee, and he's at odds with how the full committee has treated uh, D.C., which is, you know, D.C. things are, are for D.C., and he's respected, uh, Daryl Issa, by the way, has respected home rule. John Micah is now into way overreach because he's calling, he's looking at our law, singling out yeah. our law. Now, our law, as it turns out, has the layover. This is another one of the illegitimate actions in the Congress. Has the layover for 60 days. So it could be a run-up to trying to overturn the law. So I'm going to testify and say, don't even try. And the last time a law was overturned by Congress in D.C., you correct me if I'm wrong, I know you will, 1991, right? That's right. They, don't, they, don't, they usually don't do it up front. They sneak it into some other bill. But we should be having this at all. And note the reason that the council moved so quickly, by the way, not as quickly as other states. And uh, there was a study done that showed that African Americans are eight times more likely to be arrested for marijuana possession than whites in the District of Columbia, the progressive District of Columbia. And by the way, that's a nationwide phenomenon as well. Do you ever get tired of this? I mean, do, do you ever get, get tired of, of spending so much time in, in D.C. trying to convince your uh, friends and colleagues to stop picking on the yeah. redheaded stepchild that has become uh, Washington D.C. That, that is such a good question. If I were not a third generation Washingtonian, perhaps I would. But I just regard it as a real opportunity. But, but politically, what's it like? What's it really about? Like, what, why, why, why do so many members of Congress feel compelled to stick their collective noses in the business of, of, of running the city? Well, the fact is, we beat them back by by going strong at them for most of the time. But there will always be an outlier who will say, here is an opportunity yeah. for me to show off an issue back home. Now, it's interesting. John Micah wants to show off to his far-right base that he's against marijuana. Now, he can't do that in the 18 states, so he uses us as the poster child to do it, and we're not going to let him get away with that. By the way, his state is one of the worst in the disparity between blacks and whites being arrested for marijuana possession. Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton, always good to see you. He should go smoke that. Uh, she... <laughs> <laughs> and we'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you as always.